read a little bit of this uh, devotion. It bothered me. It speaks of a fact that I don't want to share. It communicates an idea that I'd rather not say. Not because it isn't true, but mainly because it is true, and it's about you and I. It applies to me as much as it applies to you. The bottom line is that it talks about being filled with the Holy Spirit as opposed to being gifted or anointed or appointed or called or all these other things that people do with quote unquote the spirit they have. Because you see, I I know where Tozer is coming from on this one. I know what he's trying to say and I know what people ignore. And that is the nature of who the Holy Spirit is as opposed to what they do with him. Because there's a huge Pentecostal movement that has gone way overboard. Charismatic movement that has gotten into so much so this force of God that they don't accept the person that the Holy Spirit is. Part of the reason why God chose the form of a dove to reveal himself as the Spirit was so that we would recognize his tenderness, his gentleness, his meekness. When God said that the room was filled with tons of flame, it wasn't a raging inferno of fire because that's what's usually reserved for judgment. But rather, it was just like a lamp that's lit, like a candle that has a flickering flame, like the oil that when you put a wick in it and you light it, it has a certain quality to that flame, that tongue, as it were, that burns brightly in the darkness. And so a lot of the imagery that I'm seeing in modern 21st century, 20th century Christianity is wrong of this powerhouse of we're going to win, you know, kind of God form of the Holy Spirit that isn't who he is, isn't what he is, and isn't what he does. You know, Jesus said that he was in another comfort, not another power not a force of nature, not a empowerment, but he said he would give the Holy Spirit to be a witness, not to witness, to be a witness. That the same nature with which the Son of Man came and did not bruise or read, you know, that he didn't break it or cause, you know, someone to be quenched. Likewise, I fear that what we've done to the Holy Spirit has grieved God greatly. And that there is a false spirit out there, a false anointing, a false realization of something that's not, not quite godly, that we've made the Holy Spirit into becoming. When Jesus said that as it was in the days of Noah, so too would it be when the Son of Man returns. He was talking about violence. He was talking about this violent nature that mankind has to kill or be killed, to slay another human being like Cain and Abel. Because man was not intended to. Creation was not created to kill each other, to devour each other to be violent towards each other. That's not what was recorded in the book of creation, but it is what was cursed after man fell from God's plan for him. So I see in the words when Jesus says that the kingdom of God suffers violence and up until now allowed it to happen. But that's not 
what God wants you to do is to go out and be violent. But he wants the Holy Spirit to change you, to allow you to let your life be crucified that you might be resurrected again unto him. Because if you don't get to the place of being filled with the Holy Spirit, then how would you be removed from the world by the Holy Spirit? If you don't come to the place of being overflowing with his love, with his joy, with his peace, how would we dare say we take flight from this world and leave it behind? I think we are in dangerous times, you and I, about grieving the Holy Spirit to a place we don't want it to be. Because if he should choose to not participate in changing us to the degree that we need to be changed and remade into the image of his son, then will we go away from the tribulation period or would we be cast into it? because we are not a fit vessel for what God's spirit is like. Because if God's spirit is not love, then why did he say God is love? If God's spirit is not love, then how dare we identify what God so loved the world with, his only begotten son, and we only identify it with the power of God, the omnipotence of God, the omniscience of God, but not the love of God. All the omnis are nowhere found in the Bible, though they may be true, and we don't know, because he didn't say so. We just put in a omni whatever in order to help us to understand him. But the love of God is stated bluntly that that's what God is. So your definition of the Holy Spirit might be needing a rearranging and changing. We might be coming to a place in time where there is that separation and that setting apart of those who are tenderized towards God and not those who are hardened towards righteousness. Because the grace extends mercy and says thank you but the hardening and righteousness says, I expect to get rapture. I expect to get grace. I expect what I demand and have no right really to expect anything except that God love you and God forgive you and God have mercy upon you. I think we're in dangerous territory. And I think I know where Toes is coming from. Because I think I see it in you. Because I know I see it in me. We still want to boss our own lives. Quench not the spirit, 1 Thessalonians 5.19. Does everybody desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I have been asked. And the answer is no. Does everyone desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit? And the answer is no. I suppose many people desire to be full, but not many desire to be filled. I want to be responsibly, I want to responsibly declare that before you can be filled with the Spirit, you must desire to be, and some people do not desire to be, Phil, we ought to be very plain in our teaching that Satan has tried to block every effort of Jesus' church to receive from the Father her divine and blood-bought patrimony that the Holy Spirit should fill his church and that he should fill individuals who make up his church. It is plain that the scriptures that the gentle and good Holy Spirit wants to fill us and possess us, if we are Christians. The Spirit is like Jesus, pure, gentle, 
sane, wise, and loving. He doesn't have a violent nature. He wants to possess you so that you are no longer in command of the little vessel in which you sail. You may be a passenger on board or one of the crew, but you definitely are not in charge. You do not dictate, nor do you direct, but the mind of the Spirit of God is. The Spirit of God is now in command of the vessel. Can you say that of yourself? Is the Spirit of God in command of your vessel? The reason we object to it being that way is because we were born of Adam's corrupted flesh. We want to boss our own lives. We want and declare ourselves in charge by every action, thought, and deed we do. That is why we ask, are you sure, are you sure that you want to be possessed by the blessed spirit of the Father and of the Son? Are you ready, are you willing for your personality to be taken over by someone who is not like what you think he is, who is not the powerhouse you want to be, who is not the macho man you think God is, but rather may be the meek and gentle spirit that allowed Jesus to bear the shame, carry the cross, and die for the sins of the world. Are you willing to die for your enemy, much less your friend? Are you willing to bear the humility that Jesus has? Are you willing to accept the mantle from God Almighty of His Spirit to be filled in such a way that you could become like that? Can you give up your rights and your freedom and your privilege to be so filled by the Holy Spirit? The answer is no. God help us.